Okay. This is gonna be good, guys. Okay, let's let's do this. Wait, what did I hit? Oh, I get to reset now. I just wasted 45 seconds of my life. Like, I can't, I can't jump. I feel so limited. <laughs> this sure makes the this way more exciting and challenging. It does. Who, me? Or wouldn't it be better if we did crouch? Only crouching. My goal for this category is sub one hour. The beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking, but what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. This is not a branching point, unfortunately. The only option is to step in. Yep. In this game, you can only walk backwards. Oh gosh. So it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. It's a short little plot, it says what it wants to say, and it ends. Didn't need anything more than that, which to me is why it works, because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. And that's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. 
Ooh, stairs. Save load simulator. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you gonna do? Once you've been slowed to, been an, slowed absolute to an absolute crawl, crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you that when you press enter, It'll bring you back up to full speed, so you can enter the door for yourself. A room that's warm, and nice, and filled with little ideas. I would've thought you would- yeah, yeah, I do what I can, to make it worse. But I mean, we're playing it in its purest form. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. <laughs> Guess what? You're... Uh, I don't think that's how it works. Ooh, ready, set, fish! We get to do the puzzle. Dang it. I guess I should reset now. Gosh. Portal 2 is the worst thing that ever happened to me. I'm sorry to hear about that. What? Are you okay, Ubga? I am okay, yes. Uh, there was a notification of some sort. I th was did someone follow? If someone just followed, I I didn't see it. Sorry. My screen it was blocked on my other screen. I'm playing a game of the beginner's guide and I'm doing it jumpless. Oh, that was you. Ew. Then never mind, no, no thank you. Uh, <laughs> because I already have world record for any percent, and jumpless one, I want jumpless to be the next category. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Every video game runs on what's called an engine. Because normally this game has terrible bunny hopping. Now it just has no bunny hopping. The engine is a set of tools for game development. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain... So here, normally we skip this part by bunny hopping over it, but we can't. Because we can't bunny hop. Like, normally we jump onto this thing and just bunny ha hop past this little cutscene. Large, flat, empty rooms is just because he's working with what the engine does well. But we get to go through this little cutscene here. Cutscenes. Not even down skip Junkless SMHing my SMH. I agree, Dasiox. Does this world... Uh, it does. It uses lots and uh, lots of world portals. Uh, there's one... The last map in the game uses more than you could possibly imagine. Actually, no. Two do. Uh, one is a uh, prison, and one is the last map in the game used more than you could possibly imagine. So we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time also, in this one, you get to experience the story more than any other category. He sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. 
believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. It's the puzzle again, with the exact same solution as the last time. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Here, Coda begins using a kind of dialogue system that fashioned out of the engine's tactical abilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. I really hope the next category is going to be jumpless S only. Oh God. S only? No, stop. You, you can kill yourself. I mean, what? No, don't do that. Now we need be the beginner's guy done jumpless. That's what we need. Oh god, I'm, I'm stuck. I've been right here this entire time. I'll just crouch this entire time. Uh, that's not a thing. You can, um, actually upload these maps into, uh, you could upload these maps into Portal 2 when I've done that before. But, I mean, the textures are all messed up. I mean, you could upload textures if you wanted, but who wants to do that? I love how slow you walk in this game. tell you quite why but for some reason coda fixates on this lamppost it's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out i'll tell you what i think uh i think that up to this point you know he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long because now he wants something to hold on to he wants a reference point he wants the work to be leading to something he wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive. You do that, uh, Sunset Bear. With more of a clear idea if you do that, I would play it, and I would play it more than anybody else would. Clearer and clearer. Ooh, this one's fun, too, because it's just straight-up walking. I would have to pay money for the game? Yeah, but it's a good game, and you could easily get world record in it. So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. Also, do you like the crosshair that this game has? This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam. In no, he doesn't speed run it. <laughs> he he owns the game because he helped work on the segment to run for a, a little stint, but he does not play it now. Okay, here's the biggest skip in the entire game, jumpless. There we go. We didn't walk down that ramp. We just go. But he was very gracious about it and very patient. Feel free to skip over any of these notes. If uh, yes. If you go above 300 units per second, you have zero air control. To me, they can oh, spoilers. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings. And Why aren't I wall strafing? Because wall strafing in this game sucks. Except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. It's literally the worst. But it's ironic, isn't it? That also, there are lots of big open spaces like this. That we get to know him better and actually try to connect with him. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in the also, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in person stuff. Coming up right here. I could just get to know you through your work. I think this is why I always liked Kodu games so much. Yeah. Okay, so you see this pit down here? 
We can't just fall into it. If you could just fall there instead of out when doing speed walkers. Like this. At the end of this level, oh, that's annoying. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games Well, that is a little better. That was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. And because there's this dark area between How long is this game? Casual is like 40... Wait, so like, look like this? Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. Ooh, this one's a lot of walking. Okay, this one is tough. It's gonna kinda just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. <laughs> Have you- I've never done inwards wall strafing, because there's no point in wall strafing. that's particularly interesting about it you just walk to the end of a hallway except for some reason Cody gets really you look on this prison. I'm looking too far how far do I have to look and I don't know why but he decides he needs to revisit this prison he's gonna start over use the same assets turn it into something else okay cool here's version two <laughs> Wait, okay, so real quick. So wait. So should I go like this? Not really communicating anything. It's kind of just weird for weirdness's sake. Or like this. 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 Okay, he throws it out and starts over. This time he comes at the prison idea from a different direction. I am. gone and you can't begin the chain of events to escape here's a version where there are no bars but you can't actually get to the well and then a version if if there wasn't an invisible wall there you could so is it like that so so do i look like this i mean he really unloaded on this prison idea there's nearly a dozen personally i think it's awful to watch this to see a person to go like this Oh, I see, I see. It's so fast. game ideas other than this prison that I could be working on? But Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop. That particular mechanism of Oh, you can actually uh get you can actually escape from this prison and go down go down there. Fun fun fact. And he likes it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. Prison is not actually in it. Uh.
Button mashing, fun. You just tried it yourself? It really isn't that great. Okay, thank you, Dasiox. It does nothing? Okay, because that's, that's what I found before, but, like, other people told me I was wrong, and I was like, no, I'm not, and they didn't believe me, so I didn't believe myself. So now I believe myself. Wait, why not? Because there's no air control, I think, is the only reason. Walking is different in this game, yes. Everything- this is a different version of Source Engine. I can see why he considers this a fitting it says hashtag Portal 2, but it's a different version of the game. It's a different Just engine, completely. Oh, I don't know why I was confused about who's following me, because I got a notification on my phone. Exactly. So what would That's what I was saying. It's slower, but like it. Other than it's so stupid. The, like literally, the best form of movement in this game is to literally just look at the exact direction you're trying to go and walk that way. Hi. How's it going? Let's table next. Notice that the quality of the art is a step up from previous games. It's the table. Which he started using from this point on. And then it's the bed. Here on out, he begins putting and then it's the rug. And then it's the couch, then the spill, then the ditches, then the tub, then the bed. Make it especially cheesy. Make it boneless. Oh, that's what I need to do. I need to change it so it says make it boneless. Scrub the tub. Scrub, scrub, scrub. Scrub, scrub, scrub. Scrub, 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 scrub. Uh, books. Table, 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 table. Uh... And then, rug. Rug, rug, rug. I'm ready. It's gonna be rug, then tub, then books, then couch. Rug, then tub, then bo Oh, and then I get a chill here. Because it goes books and couch out there. What books do they have? They have a book called Edward. They have uh, the Orchard something. The Orchard the Orchid Thief. I can't read. Let me come back here and couch, 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 and then we're all done. And then we just walk. The music stops, your companion is gone, it's time to leave. They probably did. The door at the top of the hill is now open as well. Again, you can't stay in the dark space for too long. You just can't. You have to keep moving. It's how you stay alive. Jumpless is the best category. Category. You do do. I really thought that was the point of it. I'm losing my mind. Ooh! Cutscene. Okay, so 
I'm gonna go get some food really quick while uh, this like three minute cutscene plays out. Thanks for the auto host shots fired marathon. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Spooky. Drinking is not hurting my life. What if I'm not a good teacher? And perfection. So I can't tell if that's supposed to be a black hole or an, or an eyeball or both. I like how that, that level isn't any slower. Ooh, this one is. Get ready for the best level you've ever seen. As long as it took him to make any other game before this. One, two, like three, four, five. So I remember I found that a little strange at the time. I think it's here. If it's not, I'll be wasting time. But hopefully I won't be. Because I'm opening my string cheese. Dang it. No! So we're wasting a, a solid 30 seconds, so that's good. This one took a lot longer than all the others for Coda to make. It was four months between this and the last one. That's twice as long as it took him to Speed run! One, two, three, four, five, and... So I remember I found that a little... Okay, that was calculated, guys. Save. Are you- are you serious? Are you cucking me? This is pretty speedrun, am I right? Okay, I think it was... I think it's right here? Question mark? Yeah! Strats! Okay. And I can't quick save during this or else it'll mess everything up. Nailed it. Okay, I'm just gonna press W for a little bit. Actually, no. We're gonna press S. Answer for Coda is to withdraw, to hide himself away. 
which is what leads to scenarios like the stairs that slowed you down several games ago, where it just becomes harder and harder to access Coda's inner landscape. I'm doing great. He keeps retreating. He just keeps backing away from possible connections to anyone other than himself. And to be honest, I didn't consider it very healthy when I first played this game. You know, it, it looks to me like he was trying to justify the idea of just disconnecting himself from the world. And that wasn't what I wanted for him or for his games. Because I feel like a lot of his games are inviting me to connect. To connect with this person. To bring him closer. Okay, so I only lost 32 seconds that one. Or that level. Okay, we're gonna do this level blindfolded. We did it. I was blindfolded, guys. Trust me. Like I said, I was getting concerned. First off, he's never been this explicit in his work about exactly what he's thinking. So, where's that coming from? But then, even weirder, his work has potentially stopped being an outlet for him. Not like he's having trouble iterating on ideas, but he literally just can't think of new ideas anymore. And in person, he was being a lot more distant than usual. Like, you know how sometimes a person will just deflect anything that you say in order to keep themselves disconnected all the time? It was that kind of thing. Here was the point in my relationship with Coda where I really started to wonder if he needed my help in some way. His games are going to get more desperate from here on out. After this game, it's almost six months before he finishes something new. It's right here. Wow, this is the worst meme in existence. I agree. Also, welcome. If the last Don't bump the rock. Talking explicitly about his creative frustrations, this one turns it up to 11. Now, put yourself in my shoes, please. Here's a friend whose work is exhibiting signs of struggle. Also, I'm trying to eat while I do this, so it's kind of nice that I only have to use my hand. And yet, still, he keeps making games. Yep. He keeps throwing himself into the grinder, even when he clearly doesn't have the energy for it anymore. I've basically fixed the game. Because, from my perspective at the time, and just what I knew of him, this was a Also, yeah, did I, I don't know if I said hi. He was in his own little bubble, just sitting at his computer all day, not really showing these games to anyone, uh, not releasing them onto the internet, and so... He didn't have anyone outside of himself to connect with. He had no outlet to ground himself on. You can't talk yourself out of loneliness. It doesn't work that way. You can't be the one writing both the questions and the answers. Then there's no movement. Then there's no circulation. If all of your anxieties are being channeled into your work, then if the work ever fails, you have no backup and you're just going to crash. Seeing this game at the time that he made it, it looked really unhealthy. I was watching him do this to himself, and I hated it. I hated seeing him so trapped. It's like... And you can't do either one of them in this category. This amount of suffering. This is someone I really cared about. And I used to get so much joy out of seeing him create. For him to suddenly become angry and frustrated like this, it was the worst thing for me. I don't know. This is what I felt at the time. I don't know how else to explain it. But... 
I wanted it to stop more than anything. I had never felt so rotten. I just... I needed more than I had ever needed anything for this to stop. But it didn't stop. After finishing this one, Coda takes another seven months and comes up with a new game. Woo, if there was a place where you could fall against the wall, oh, let's see. What are you talking about falling against the wall? It calls itself Coda. Whoa! That's crazy. Oh wait, we're gonna we're gonna get this sick five second or no two second time save. We missed it. Good. Uh, like a long fall where you could speedball strafe without jumping. Yeah, but that's oddly specific. And I don't think that's a thing. Oh wait, there is a place where we fall against a wall in this level, actually. But there's actually a faster way of doing it, I lied. The way the way we do it is faster than speedball strafing against a wall. So now the work is becoming self-destructive. And I'll tell you, at the time that I first played this game, shortly after he made it, here's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking that Code is stuck in his own head, and that it's having a very negative effect on him, and that all he needs to do is just start showing his work to people, to get some actual feedback on his games. It might get him out of isolation. And so, as I'm thinking this, I realize that I could be the one to initiate it. Because it would never occur to Coda to start actively soliciting feedback, so what if I did it for it? If he could see the difference it would make to have more actual conversations with other human beings, would that bring him out of his mental spiral? Look at my spray control, guys. Would it bring meaning back into his work? Save loading like a boss. So I started showing Coda's work to people. Showing Coda's work to people. I took this one. I and took this the one, and the islands that you just played, and the islands that you just played, the islands the which you just played, the, the theater played, the, the theater, the, the notes, the house theater, the, the notes, the house cleaning game, some of the prison escape game. I brought them to people. Oh, this is the best part. I can crouch now. And the great part is that they really loved his games. You know, the point of it all is just to give them some external reference point. But they, they genuinely. What is this game? Bad? Yes. That was my dog. Can you see why I felt like this was the right thing to do? Because it's the thing that I always feel like. So this is what I do for the next like minute. That I am good. When when someone really connects with a thing that I've made, when they see themselves purely in my work, there's nothing that feels better. And I got to give that very same feeling to my friend. I did something. I really felt like I'd done something good. Like. Like, I was a good person. I felt like there was a friend who was in trouble and was unhappy and, and maybe didn't like themselves, and I could fix it. If I could give him this gift, maybe I could fix the problem. When they told me how much they enjoyed his games, it was the best feeling. It was the absolute best feeling. It, it made me feel so happy. So beautifully, beautifully happy. Beautifully, beautifully happy. Um, so anyway, Coda finished.
finishes this game, and then <laughs> really he just kind of takes off for a while. So this is June of 2011, and I didn't hear anything from him for several weeks, I guess. Um, and so out of nowhere, one day I get an email, and it's got a private link to a new game of Coda's. <laughs> This one is called The Tower. You'll see why. Uh, sounds up, Bear. Last game that Coda ever made. So let's take a look. And this is where I have trouble saying anything meaningful about Coda's work. Because more than anything else, the tower just feels distant. It feels like it's trying to distance itself from the world. It's a very cold game. This room actually has a maze in it. Except that all the walls of the maze are invisible. And then, every time you touch one of the walls, there's this awful flashing and noise, so the experience is really miserable. The game goes beyond not being meant to be played, it actually seems to despise the player for trying to play it at all. But, I do want to show you the rest of the level, so when you're ready to continue, press enter and I'll put a bridge over the maze. And to be fair, it's not like this is the first game that's needed some modification to be playable. Like the house cleaning game. You know, that one used to actually loop the cleaning chores and you just cleaned a house forever. I had to cut it off so that you could exit the house and the game would actually end. But that game had an idea that it was actually trying to communicate. What's the deeper idea behind the invisible maze? The only way past this challenge is to randomly guess the six digit code. Like the invisible maze, it's frustrating to me, because it's the opposite of everything else that Coda has made. It doesn't encourage thought or engagement. It doesn't ask anything of me, except a lot of my time. If I could have reached him during this time, then maybe I could have asked him, but I couldn't. I still don't really understand why this is here. I'll put the code on the ground for you here, though, so that we can move on. The switch to open this door is actually on the other side of the door meaning that it's literally impossible to solve from this side. So even if you somehow brute forced your way through the first two challenges, and you got to this point, there's actually just no way to progress. And it's scary for me, the idea of Koda cutting himself off entirely, just saying, you know, that's it, that's the end of the conversation, not giving me any way to fix the problem. I feel like a failure, I guess, when I can't fix the problem. But I can open this door for you, so let me do that. Was I a failure for not Probably. understanding this game? I don't know why I would be. Wait. It's not like everything needs to have a solution. Uh, no, I, I was going to say something, but I, f I, feel like I forgot. I like how there's all these other areas in the rest of the map that, like, don't matter. I'm playing this for the very first time. And as I'm playing, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know this person. I have no idea who this person is. It wasn't the guy I knew, it wasn't my friend. I had come to so many conclusions from looking at all of his work up to this point, and then suddenly none of them... I had been trying to, though. That was the thing. For years I was trying to get to know him, to understand who he actually was and, and what he stood for. So how's everyone's day been going? So please, just tell me what his games mean to him. Anyone done anything cool lately? Oh gosh. I just felt Reset. So that if I could have connected with him, that if I could have somehow made his work my own, that I would finally be once and for all happy. It was that I needed to see myself in someone else. I needed to be someone other than me. But he stopped and left. And it felt somehow like I had failed. Where did I screw up? Hi, pumpkin.
Thank you for your interest in my games. I ask you not to speak to me anymore. I wonder at times whether you think I'm making these games for you. You infect my personal space it's possible to plan solutions in my work. If there's any answer, meaning blah, blah, violating boundary. Would you stop changing my game? Stop adding lampposts? Will you simply let them be what they are? And the people who played them, they treated me like I was important. They really listened and cared about what I had to say. Even though I was showing your work, it was... I felt good about myself. Finally. For a moment, while I had that, I liked myself. And then you stopped. And I didn't have anything left to show people. I, I just had to be with myself. And as soon as that happened, there was no feeling at all. Okay, so we get to sit in a cutscene for another minute or two, so let's just talk really quick. That I did something really Anyone have any like profound pieces of anything? That's why I'm releasing this collection of your work. Is because I haven't been able to find any other way to reach you. I've tried everything. And so a part of me has hope that if I put this compilation out into the world, and if I put my name on it, that maybe enough people will play it so that it'll find its way to you. Uh, does so that I can tell Koda you kill himself? Like, what I'm kind sorry. of creepy pasta, no edgy piece of shit is this? No, he doesn't kill himself. He just, um, well, he might have, actually. This guy, Davey Reed, and it's all about him trying to find his friend Koda and apologize to him. Uh, and Koda, like, completely fell off the radar. I mean, is, is something wrong with me? Because I know that I did an awful thing, and I'm doing it again right now. Like, I'm, I'm showing people your work, but I can't stop myself from doing it. That's how badly I need to feel something again. Like, I'm an addict. There has to be something wrong with me. Can I apologize? What if I tell you I was wrong? Will that work? Will that fix it? I, I, I don't know. I don't think it will, but there's nothing else that I can do. Just tell me what you want. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please start making games again. Please help me. Please give me some of whatever it is that that makes you complete. I want whatever that wholeness is that you just summoned out of nothing and you put into your work. You were complete in some way that I never was. And I want to know how to how to, I want to know how to be a good person. I want to know how not to hate myself. Please. I'm fading and all I want is to know that I'm going to be okay. Okay, so now we're in Half-Life 3. And the reason it's called Half-Life 3... <laughs> oh, this is that blog as well. Um, I don't know if it's a true story. I think it is, but some people don't. So the reason it's called Half-Life 3 is because it starts in a train station. And, if it, and for it to be a Half-Life game, it has to have a train station in it. So that was the joke, but I think it really happened, but I, I don't know. Always more, more, more. It's like a disease. Solution. Solution. Oh, that was almost cool. Mem. I guess if someone had told me ahead of time that he just really enjoyed making prison games. Maybe I wouldn't have thought he was so desperate. <laughs> wouldn't have told so many people that he was depressed. Don't tell people that your friend is depressed unless you really think they are. Not they don't just act weird. There's plenty. Also, that balcony over there, I don't get it. But yeah, these map, these last two maps, this one and the next one, these ones weren't made by Coda. I don't know if if Coda isn't a real person, then none of them were made by Coda. But these last two weren't designed to be made by Coda. Oh, I forgot to split. We're fine though. Wait, this is gonna be like very good <laughs> compared to. How is this so much faster? Something to be driven by other than validation. 
any sane game dev would use the Portal 2 engine. Well, this guy is the guy, the guy that made this is the same guy that made, uh, Stanley Parable, so it's kind of a step up. Oh, it's definitely not a step up from Half-Life 2. It's a step down from Half-Life 2. Oh god, that's loud. And I'm sorry cuz I know that I said that I would be here and I, and I would walk you through this, but I'm starting to feel like I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot that I need to make up for. And so I'm just gonna Okay. Okay, I'm back. I had I muted my mic while that was ringing, cause that was very loud. Oh, please don't. Okay, I was worried I would have to jump there. Parkour. Ugh. Hardcore parkour. I looked it up and Coda is fictional, but the whole game is basically a metaphor like what Davy experienced after the success of Stan the Parable or something. Is where did you who said that? Like what's the source? Cause that makes total sense. That uh his drive to like do things after he succeeded left because <laughs> because once you succeed and you've wasted that big idea you had, there's not really anywhere else to go from there. We're almost there, guys. Rip sub 53. The rest is up to our interpretation. Oh, that's bullshit. Okay, um... 5309. 